triumphantly today saying thank you oh magnificent and heavenly father thank you for saving a remnant of people remnant of people to keep us united to keep us loving one another to keep us compassionate towards each other Remember our greed, Lord, that's here in our church and around our community. Our bereaved ones, remember them, Lord, and comfort them. Comfort us, Lord. We need you, Lord. Bless and encourage our young leaders and our young church leaders of tomorrow. Lord, guide them into all truth. And don't forget to give us this day our daily bread. Now bless our pastor and his lovely wife, his family, with a hedge of protection around their mind, their spirit, their home, along with the mass choir and the congregation and friends and community. Strengthen our finances, Lord, each and every one of us. Strengthen our faith. Strengthen our agility towards ourselves and mankind. And we thank you, Lord, for our healing, our prayer, the chant.
This morning's scripture reading comes from Judges chapter 4, verses 1 through 5, and then chapter 5, verses 11 and 12. If you would like to follow along, that starts on page 215 of your pew Bible. I will be reading the NIV. Judges chapter 4, verses 1 through 5, titled Deborah. Again, the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord, now that Ehud was dead. So the Lord sold them into the hands of Jacob, king of Ham, mm -hmm. who reigned in Hazar. Caesarea, the commander of his army, was based in Harobeth, Hagium, because he had 900 chariots fitted with iron and had cruelly oppressed the Israelites for 20 years. Oh. They cried to the Lord for help. Mm -hmm. Now Deborah, a prophet, mm -hmm. the wife of Lapida was leading Israel at the time. She held court under the song of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in the hill country of Ephraim. Yeah. And the Israelites went up to her to have their disputes decided. Yeah. Over in chapter 5, starting with 11. The voice of the singers at the watering places. They recite the victories of the Lord, the victories of his villagers in Israel. Then the people of the Lord went down to the city gates. Wake up, wake up, Deborah. Wake up, wake up. Break out in song. Arise, hurrah. Take captive your captives, son of Ebon. I have read for you Judges chapter 4, verses 1 through 5. In Judges 5, verses 11 and 12, the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Amen. 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 Happy Mother's Day. Amen. This is the day the Lord has made. We will Amen. rejoice Amen. and we will always be glad in each and every Amen. day Amen. that God uh, wakes us up. Amen. 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 So we thank the Lord for uh, being in the house of the Lord one more time. Rejoice, give God praise. I'm be glad to be in the service one more time. Amen. 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 Uh, just a few announcements. On May the 23rd will be our fourth quarterly conference. It will be at 6:30 and it will be Zoom. And I will be emailing you your uh, report sheets uh, for each auxiliary. So please be on the lookout. Uh, on your, for your email uh, for those uh, report sheets. Amen. Amen. Um, I did, uh, Brother Nelson, did you get uh, Sister Essie's, uh, Sister Yolanda's? I believe so. You got hers. I okay. So. All right. Uh, so the rest will come electronically. It is good to see everyone here this morning. Good to see you, Sister Amen. Black, Sister Nelson. Amen. Sister. Uh, Diane, God bless you. And of course, Sister Swanigan, it's always good to see her. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Swanigan, for coming. And Amen. Good to see everyone this morning. Oh. Amen. Amen. Yes, go ahead, Sister Tommy. Well, this is my grandson. This is Diane's. Your grandson. What he a gave grandson. me last night my mother's Oh, wow. Well, God bless you. Oh, God bless you. Yeah. Yeah. You and we thank God for safe travels for you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Amen. Amen. Also, we do have one uh, concern. Uh, if you want to, if you desire to be a delegate representing Mass Memorial at our annual conference on July 16th through the 19th, that will be in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. If you desire to be a delegate or servant of that, please let me know. Amen. Uh, we will need to confirm you at the fourth quarter if you desire to be that. And the church will, Reverend Swanigan does not appoint delegates. How do you do that? The pastor doesn't appoint delegates. Who, who, how are delegates uh, selected in the church? 
They are voted on at the church conference. So no one, no one selects any delegates. The church comes together and they select people who they think will represent them or give them great representation at the annual conference. Amen. 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 Yes, Sister uh, Nelson. Are we still having our steward and stewardess day uh, next Sunday? Okay. That's going to be next Sunday. Sunday. Yes. Who who do we? Yeah, we 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 ask Reverend Rogers to be our preacher. Amen. Yes. Yeah. By all means, Reverend Rogers will be our preacher. Reverend Will Rogers. Amen. 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 Of the Friendship House of Prayer. Amen. Amen. I met I met his pastor, Pastor Lane. I'd like to do a little talking with him, but uh, he will be our preacher for next. Sunday. Well, God bless everyone. Now, at this time, let us receive Sister Deborah Plummer, who will come with uh, Mother's Day greetings and other gifts for Mom. Amen. Oh, amen. 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 And just a little token of, um, from the church, and I let mothers know that we do love them. Amen. And, amen. Um, amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. While she's passing those out, um, there was a few things that had come to my mind. I, I did select something um, to to share, and um, I think probably it's a good idea that um, I, I, I go ahead and do this because I think it's needed. Um, but um, I see that we do have um, the faithful of remnant here. I know for some moms uh, who are up in age, such as my mom, that um, they don't always get out. Um, so I do understand that. And, but um, I know that um, in other cases, there probably are those who probably should be here. Um, and um, for whatever reason, they're not here. <clears throat> um, and uh, the Lord told me, if you don't make a lot of excuses, Deborah. Uh, Heard the reading from the scripture this morning, and um, my mother did um, name me Deborah. Um, she if my, it spelled a short version, but right. um, you know I'm gonna speak the truth when I'm asked to speak. Um, but more than that, I'm just gonna share the grace and the mercy of God this morning, um, and His grace and His mercy, His love for mothers, mm -hmm. and so that, that's the truth that I'm going to bring. Um, Easter, we talked about the truth of the resurrection and the Lord still, uh, everything that I have heard, I don't know uh, about you, but if you're listening here, everything that has come about still uh, since that time has been um, focused on the truth. And so this reading, and it's a, it's a, a litany that um, I got, um, and um, I want to just go ahead and share it. And it starts off by saying, All-knowing God who sees and helps to bear the pains and disappointments of every mother, we ask that you extend to our mothers comfort and strength. Mm -hmm. And for all those who are, who are mothers, whether you have um, born a child or whether God has given you the gift of motherhood um, because of the character he has put in you, uh -huh. um, you do need comfort and you do need strength because the, the journey Amen. is not an easy one. For, especially for mothers. Um, it's not Father's Day, so we'll, we'll, we'll give our respect to and compassion to the fathers of Father's Day, but this is Mother's Day. Amen. So, uh, and then he also asked us to pray uh, for the mothers who suffer uh, due to life circumstances such as unemployment, insufficient housing, poor health care. Uh, we also ask for healing for mothers um, as they have experienced mistreatment and witnessed the harsh and abuse of their children, husbands, siblings, and parents. Yeah. Yeah. These are things are realistic things, and they are truthful things. But they are things that we need to be mindful of and to uh, pray about. Mm -hmm. um, our life may be of such where it's different, but there's a lot of uh, mothers in this world today that have a different life. Yes. And we have to be mindful of everyone. You know, God has put us in this world all together, and we do have to be mindful of others and have compassion for others. 
And so that's the grace and the mercy of God. And he's instilling that in us to uh, extend out into this world. Yeah. We pray for mothers and their children um, as violent crimes, drug abuse cons conspired to uh, tear the fiber of our families. Um, a real evident thing for now. Um, and it's always been there, but it's probably just more evident now than ever. We also pray that God would empower mothers to enrich the lives of their families, aid them as they teach sons and daughters determination and the value of investing in the future. And that's really so important. I know that's something that my parents did with us uh, as far as investing in the future. <clears throat> All parents want to see their uh, children succeed and want to prepare them for um, not just today, but also for tomorrow. Yeah. And it's kind of important uh, to not just deal with today's issues, but you have to look long range down the road. Um, when you aren't here to supply, to support all the needs of those children, mm -hmm. um, how are they going to survive? How are they going to be taken care of? There's measures that we do um, as Christians and as people of faith that we need to put in place to make sure family members know how to take care of themselves. And this is something we've had to deal with in our family, but <clears throat> as our young adults come of age, um, we do believe in helping them, but there, there, there's a thing called tough love, where they have to kind of step out and they have to experience this life, make some mistakes. Well, We, pick the, we also uh, pray them through those mistakes. We love them. That love never stops, but we want them to mature and to grow up into Christ Jesus. So it's a tough road, but it, it's one that they got to go through. We went through it. They've got to go through it. But we're there. Uh, we're there with God's grace and mercy in our um, arms open wide to assist and, and to continue to give them direction. <clears throat> We also, um, mothers have always been activists and leaders, teaching us how to live, uh, making our communities better. Uh, we remember uh, other, um, our, those have gone on before us, um, our ancestors who, who birthed crusades um, during uh, difficult times in this life through the lynching, reconstruction, and, and so forth, and all of those uh, leaders, many of, of, of just as many were women um, as there were men, um, but we also uh, think of the, the path that they have created for us for, mm -hmm. to have a better life. Yeah. And as they did that, they really are, were leaving a pathway for us to teach that next generations and those next generations as they go forward. Yeah. So it wasn't just for us to live in the beauty of it all, but to also bless somebody else with what we had been blessed with. Right. We cherish mothers who teach, write, preach the truth, who open the minds of children to limitless possibility. Mm -hmm. We celebrate mothers who are homemakers, educators, authors, pastors, who formulate ideas, expend creative energy, and inspire young people to become leaders. That is uh, so important, particularly important in the church, that we inspire our young people to become leaders. Oh, to, yes. um, as, as we've given the path and as we've caught and trained, um, that they can step off and, and, and take on those leadership roles mm -hmm. and continue on in the roles of the church. Yeah. This way the church continues to grow. And this way the church has its future leaders. And so um, it, it's important, and it's important in your, your households mm -hmm. um, for that same thing, to have those leaders. Well, I wrote is a good example. Um, this was a, a good example behind me, but also I was looking at one in front of me uh, yeah. who uh, made the trip to come and be with his mother yeah. on Mother's Day, you know, and uh, that, that's special. Yeah. That's special. Yeah. You know, that's yeah. special. Yeah. Uh, but that's the type of, you know, leadership that we, we want in our, in our, young, in our young people, yeah. you know, right. that they take that initiative and nobody's going to call and say, you know, Mother's Day is coming up. We know it's coming up. <laughs> Just do what you need to do. And that's what we look for. Thank you, Mariah, for being here. That's right. Um, Thank you. When Mariah and I talk, you know, they say, well, why does she always listen to you? I said, <laughs> I have a way with people. <laughs> no, um, but, you know, uh, all 
I'm saying is that um, good leadership and good examples yeah. will bring that forth. That, that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm also saying that <clears throat> mothers have been a loving presence in business and in play and the arts and in all of life. And because our mothers taught us that the Lord will make a way out of no way, Amen. we have the inheritance of a powerful spiritual legacy. Amen. We give mothers bouquets of gratitude and honor. Kind, a kind and gentle Savior ever bless them. Amen and amen. Amen. She made me think about what happened on Thursday of this week um, as I was um, driving the school bus. There was, some, there was one of the riders coming to the bus. She ran out ahead of her, her parents. Oh. And she's getting ready to cross the, um, oh. the street. So I had to jump out of my seat. I don't see, didn't see the parents weren't going to stop her. I had to jump out of my seat and tell her to stop and wait for her parents mm -hmm. before she crossed the busy street. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, little Ryan Williams came up to me after that and said, Mr. Adrian, mm -hmm. you don't want any of us to die, do you? Amen. You don't want to just, I said, no, Ryan, I don't want you all to die. I don't want anyone to die. And I thought about that in relation relationship to mother and fathers in our community, that we should take the attitude that we don't want to see any of our children die. Amen. Yeah. And that's, that's the truth. That, that's the way it should be. Amen? Amen. Amen. Amen.
So the question remains, who or how or who would lead this nation of Israel back to God? That is, no one but a mother in Israel named Deborah. She was responsible for bringing her people back to God. She was a prophetess. She was the wife of Lepidon. And she held court. People would come to her for advice, for whatever they needed, advice in the law, and she was there to assist. She was a judge in Israel, and she held court under the palm tree between Ramah and Bethel, just north of the city of Jerusalem. Now, let's turn our attention to Deborah's husband, uh, Lapidon. Lapidon. Uh, you know, you, you have heard the expression behind every good man is a good woman. But let me add that also behind every good woman is a good man. And he's only mentioned once in the Bible. And that's too bad. <laughs> His wife, Deborah, received all of the platitudes. She received all of the publicity. Yet, he allows his wife to obey God and do God's will without his male pride being injured or standing in her way. There aren't many men like that today. Amen? Amen. Even in the church, for years, the CME church, they, we were led by men, uh, but thank God in June, 2010, all of that changed with the election of our first female bishop, uh, Reverend, the Right Reverend Teresa Snort. She became our bishop, and then in June of 2022, the CME Church, uh, the delegation elected the second female bishop, Bishop uh, Denise Madas. So we have two bishops. Amen. Female bishops. It took us 140 years to, to, to defeat male domination in our church. But I can't be too hard on our Sydney church because uh, the Sydney church led in acknowledging God's call to women in ministry by ordaining women, uh, electing them into full connection. Even today, some of our leading denominations in our country, white and black, will not allow a woman in their pulpit. Now, if Lapidot understood this over 3,000 years ago, what's wrong with the men in the church today? Let us not forget that it was our risen Lord who sent the women to at the tomb with the first gospel crusade Go tell my brethren to meet me in Galilee. Men are slow learners. We also learn from Lapidon that the woman you marry is your wife and not your servant. She is a, a co-equal partner in the marriage relationship. The husband is to lead the home. He is not to be a tyrant. Decisions in the home are to be made by mutual consideration. And it is very clear that Deborah would not have been able to become the queen warrior she was had it not been for the support of the hus her husband, Lapidon. So as we come to our text, day after day, Deborah is faced with the same circumstances as her people. The terrible oppression of the Canaanites, the servitude of the warlord Jabin, of Hazar, and his armies that would sweep down to unarmed, unprotected 
Israelites, and they were in chariots. Uh, you see, they were uh, uh, very advanced militarily, uh, and her nation was not. Uh, so she decided that she could no longer sit idly by and allow this to happen. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., he declared that the ultimate tragedy is, is uh, not that oppression and cruelty by bad people, but the silence over that by good people. Deborah had decided that she could no longer remain silent. She was sick and tired of being sick and tired. I wonder if there's anybody in the house today who is just simply sick and tired of being sick and tired. Tired of, of being talked about. Tired of being pushed around. Tired of being disappointed and disrespected. Just simply tired, sick and tired of being sick and tired. And it's time for us, my brothers and sisters, even mothers, to stand up and say something. Amen? Because greater is he who is in us than he who is in the world. We are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Jesus said, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. So we need to stand up and make our voices heard. Listen to what Deborah does. One day she summons Barak, who was unfortunately a coward. Uh, he lived just south of her in the land of Nephtali. She commands he that, that he mobilize 10,000 from the tribe of Nephtali, Nephtali and Zebulun, 10,000 fighting men to fight against the warlord King Jabin and his army under the command of Sesera. And the Lord says, here's what God says, I will draw them into the Kishon River and you will defeat them there. That is in Judges 4, 6, and 7. She was tired of being oppressed. She was tired of being pushed around and knew what it was, and, and she knew that it was not God's will for her people to live in servitude. She received the word from the Lord. Amen. And I don't know about you, but, but I need a word from the Lord. Anybody need a word from the Lord this morning? I, I need a word. Paul says that the word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you will be delivered. I need a word today. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I need a word today. Guide me, O thou great Jehovah, pilgrims in this barren land. I'm weak, but thou art mighty. Hold me with your powerful hand. Bread of heaven, bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Deborah got a word for Barak to fight, but Barak was afraid in verse 8, for 4 and 8. He says, Deborah, I'll go, but, but only if you come with me. Uh, Deborah replied, I'll go with you, Barak. Now is the time for action, my brothers and sisters. Barak leads his army along with Deborah and his 10,000 men to do battle, and the Lord throws the Canaanite army into a panic. Yeah. Caesarea and his men try to escape on foot. They are persuaded, and they are pursued, and they are destroyed. No one man is left alive. And the point of this Mother's Day message is for you to make a difference right where you are today. You may say, Pastor, I, I can't. I'm, I'm losing my house. Or, Pastor, my husband is not saved. My, my children are wayward. I, I lack education. And you can go on and on with all those excuses. And you might be right about all those things. Uh, but, but you're forgetting one thing. The battle is not 
Lord's. It is the Lord's. Amen. The battle is the Lord's. Amen. If you just hold your peace and let the Lord fight your battles, then victory, victory, victory shall be yours. Don't you wait on no politician. Don't you wait on no president. Don't you wait on even the pastor. Just stand up and fight. And do you remember that great quote from the character Sophia played brilliantly by actress Oprah Winfrey in the movie The Color Purple. She said, all my life, I had to fight. And this is true with many other African-American mothers of our past. All their lives, they had to fight. Harriet Tubman, she had to fight. Sojourner Truth and Ida B. Wells, they had to fight. And then Rosa Parks, oh, they had to fight. Barbara Jordan and Angela Davis had to fight. Fannie Lou Hamer and Mahalia Jackson had to fight. Mary McLeod Bethune and Shirley Chisholm had to fight. Ruby Bridges and Michelle Obama had to fight. Amen. Serena and Vanessa of Venus Williams had to fight.
And thank you, Sister Deborah, for those very kind words. I could have just let you go on, and <laughs> you could have been the preacher. I, I, you know, it was so profound. So thank you again, Sister Deborah, our musician, for Marcus Murray. And our usher, God bless you, uh, for a girl. Let us now stand our feet for the doxology and our benediction.